All right, guys, welcome back to another Yo Spill video. So for tonight, what we are going to get into is a detailed engine build for the CSX. This is the new short block right here. These are the new pistons. These are 10 to 1, 2.4 pistons. And these are set of forged rods. And there's the crank. And as you can see already, the block is completely disassembled. There's no crank, no nothing inside of it. Uh, this video, I'm going to go very in depth on ring gap, top ring. Your bottom rings are here on the piston, your oil rings are there. We're gonna do some cylinder uh, fix. If you can see on the video right there, there's a little bit of water lines uh, and pitting in the cylinder walls. So it'll be a lot of honing, a lot of cleaning up of this block. And then we will get into setting ring gaps or figuring out ring gaps or showing you guys even how to you know measure or calculate it. And um, we actually have the paperwork there's my hone uh, that comes with the pistons themselves and tells you right here blower which is boost nitrous circle track or drag, drag racing you want to you know have your first ring whatever the bore is plus 0445 if you ever have wondered how to figure out the bore on a piston uh, you should get a paper when you get your piston and this right here is actually your spec sheet on your piston and it will tell you everything you need to know so your bore is 3.445 or 87.5 millimeters. If you guys are Honda people and you're watching this video, yes, that is a oversized H22 piston. So the 2.4 Mopar motor uses basically a 0.5 millimeter or yeah, 0.5 millimeter oversized H22 piston or K24 piston. It's very similar. All right, guys, so what you just watched there on the time lapse was using our scale, measuring all the pistons and rods. This is a complete piston with the pin, all four rods, one through four, all the weights, mark them down. Uh, these pistons and rods are actually very, 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 very close in uh, weight down to the ounce. So rod three and four are one ounce less than rod one and two. And all of the pistons weigh exactly the same. So there's not much you can do here in the form of balancing unless you want to take an ounce off of both of these, which an ounce is not going to affect much in this motor. So we are going to leave them alone, leave them marked one through four. And uh, now we can actually get to the process of getting this motor set up so that the ring gap is proper. All right, guys. So you can see here that we have the top and uh, second ring off the pistons. We're not really too concerned with the oil ring. Uh, the bore is the same bore as this block. There's nothing uh, major different with that. And I actually just noticed on this piston right here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it actually says exhaust side, which is kind of funny. Um, and if you look at the piston, this side of the skirt is actually a lot longer and wider and stronger than this little side over here. Uh, the old pistons out of this motor, uh, let's see where we put them. If you notice, the skirts are equal. So this piston is probably, uh, if I actually pull this thing off the rod, I can tell you the exact weight difference, but I can guarantee you that this piston is a, a little lighter than this one. So there won't be as much friction on the sidewall here. And also, if you guys haven't noticed in the video, these are Teflon coated and they are used, but they are still in really good condition. So we're gonna get to filing rings and uh, put you guys back on time-lapse. We went here off of the blown race only application and if you put our bore of 3.445 in and you do it times 0 0.06 which is 60 thousandths you get around 20 uh, thousandths ring gap for the top ring if you put it in by 63 you get 21 thousandths by this 
we are going to set it a little looser than recommended here because we do plan on turning this thing up to probably 25, 30, maybe 35 pounds of boost. Uh, oh, maybe 45. My brother said 45, so maybe 45 pounds of boost. So we're going to set her a little loose. Um, so I'll set these around 22 to 23, and I'll probably set these uh, 24, 25-ish. And uh, let's get to that. All right, guys, so all the rings are now to the proper uh, sizes. These boards were a little bit uh, larger than they needed to be. So the ring gap, like I said, is a little loose, which is fine. That's great for us, uh, for especially when we send this thing on over 40 pounds of boost. So I just want to show you guys a comparison. This is the new piston and rod. This is a Crower um, rod with Crower ARP 2000 bolts, our JE pistons. There's our pin. Here's our two sets of rings, and uh, if we put this back on the scale, you'll see 2.2 pounds and 6.5 ounces. So this is what the new setup weighs, and if we take one of the old ones, let's see if we can get it all on here, you see 2 pounds, 8 ounces. So these rods are clearly, this one has the center cut out of it. Whereas this one has the sides. So this is like a Eagle style rod. This is a Crower style rod. And then this is a Aries piston versus a JE piston of the same motor. You can see how low compression those are. Let's move these and we don't damage the rings. And you can see how flat top these are. So we lost weight, we gained compression. So the new setup should run a lot better down low out of boost. And then once we get into boost, a nice flat top piston is, is good for, uh, you know, controlling the combustion chambers in the center here. This is, a, uh, I would say, a little low, too low compression, but uh, some people disagree. But now let's get to putting the whole piston and rod assemblies together. Put you guys back on time lapse. I just wanted to show you the difference in weight between the new setup and the old setup. All right, guys, so while assembling this motor, before we actually put the bed plate onto the short block, we are going to install this DCR balance shaft delete kit. The reason why we're doing this is because we don't want to get the metal from this hole we have to tap right here for this bolt right here, which here is the one quarter 12 tap. So we basically have to insert this into here, which I have already done. Uh, you can see the shreds right there and this is the oil feed for the balance shaft assembly that would normally go here and that's what this kit basically deletes so you can see i already tapped the hole so the, the tap goes in it nice and easy but uh the old motor had one of these in it and uh we never had any issues with that part so time to get to installing the dcr balance shaft delete kit All right, guys, so while we were doing our balance shaft delete kit, uh, we also ordered a few other things from DCR. We ordered a outer parameter uh, stud kit, see right there, 
22 foot pounds. And what that does is it takes all these where there's factory bolts and it puts ARP hardware. Um, on top of that, we, you know, did the balance shaft elite kit. This actually puts ARPs here too. And on top of that, we did a DCR strap kit. So basically what this is, is it's an aluminum block and it has these little Allen head adjuster screws in it. And it is pretty much machined perfectly so that it slides over these studs. And these are ARP mains. Another thing we got from them, this whole kit comes together. And uh, what you do is you, you know, put this on here. It fits, you know, nice. There's actually like, you know, these cutout holes right here, which is kind of weak. So all this does is basically strengthen that. And then you can add, you know, some preload onto it so that the plate is as pushed down as possible. Um, this kit is designed for an SRT4. So we had to, let me see if I can get this one off with one hand. We had to actually take this and put it in the grinder on both sides and pretty much narrow it for this hole right here. Uh, I can't positively say that this is different on an SRT4 than this, but uh, we definitely had to modify it. You can see we had to modify a lot, but now it works. So now we have our strap kit, we have our oil hole plug, we have our ARPs for where our balance shafts will go, and we have our ARPs on our outer bed plate. So now what we have to do is pull this all back apart and put sealant in between the top block and the lower girdle so that we can actually have a complete block before we get to putting our pistons and rods in so just a lot of stuff you can buy if you guys need any of this stuff dcr daryl cox racing pretty easy to find pretty good diet uh these uh packaging is very nice a lot of you know smaller companies the packaging is kind of horrible and this kit all comes together it comes with everything you need so i give give them a good credit for this so now let's get to pulling this all back apart so we can get some rtv on it All right, guys, so after the last time lapse, you see everything is installed. You have your small outside bed plates. You have your balance shaft elite. You have your center. You have your plates with these all loose. And now we are going to get to the process of torquing all of this down. All right, guys, well, now we have all four pistons and rods in. Everything's complete. Torque down the, the rod uh, bolts and everything. And this is basically how to build a 800 horsepower capable 2.4 bottom men. Uh, the only thing that we don't show in the video or anything is putting on the oil pan, the oil pump, the windage tray and everything. We're actually gonna wait off on that until the parts for the head come in because we wanna put the whole motor together as one assembly and put it back in the car. We don't want to have everything all pieced apart or whatever. But uh, if you guys watch the video where I talk about the... Uh... So just like I was showing in the old video, videos before we were rudely interrupted by the air compressor, uh, these pistons are 10 and a half to one and they set perfectly flat with the top of the deck. 
Uh, you can see the sleeves look real nice in there. Pistons, like I said in the video earlier, are used. Uh, the rods are actually Crower steel, uh, billet steel rods. Yeah, billet steel rods. And they are rated up to 800 horsepower. These pistons have a good rating of up to 800 horsepower. All the DCR bottom end stuff is capable of 800 or more wheel horsepower. Um, if you watch the video where I talk about all the parts we have, when we put the billet wheel and everything inside the OEM oil pump, of course, that'll be capable of up to 800 horsepower. And then the only thing we didn't put on this motor is a Wendis tray. Uh, I don't really think we need a Wendis tray. It's a drag car. We're not going to do too much. And these pans are really good at scavenging because of the way the oil pump and oil filter is set up right on the front of the pan. It's not really necessary unless, you know, you're doing like road racing or something. But just to show you guys the difference, look at this finger gap for the piston and then compression. So the turbo should spool a lot faster. Everything should work a lot better. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. As always, give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. And subscribe to the channel if you want more Turbo Dodge content or more engine build content or anything of that sort. Uh, I have been working on Lavaca in the background. Haven't really made a video about it because it's a bunch of wiring and that is the most boring thing ever in the world to do. So I don't want to bore you with a whole video of me wiring a car. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Until the next one. And as always, you guys are the best.